This is section 5, performance. In this section, we're going to take a look at how to perform load tests with Apache Shea Meter, how to profile an application with PProf and GoTorch, a general guide on how to scale your services, uh, using an in-memory data store to scale reads, and using NGINX as a load balancer, and finally, monitoring an application with Prometheus. This is video 1, load testing with Apache Shea Meter. In this video, we're going to take a look at what is load testing, creating a test plan in Apache Shea Meter, using data from a CSV on our test plans to generate dynamic URLs for our test, and what are aggregate values and percentiles. For this video, we're going to be using the user service that we created on, on last section. We need to start it. If you haven't done this, please go to the README of uh, section 4, video 3. Uh, there you'll know how to, you'll find how to uh, create the user's database. We're starting the database, the first thing we do. Then we're starting our application. So what is load testing? Load testing is a type of software testing that we do to understand the behavior of an application under normal and anticipated peak conditions, and it helps to identify the maximum operating capacity of an application as well as any bottlenecks and determine which element is causing degradation. A very good tool to do load testing is Apache Shea Meter. We have installed this on, the, on section 1 when we installed the required software. If you haven't, please refer to video 2 of section 1. To start Apache Shea Meter, we need to go to the, to the directory where we have downloaded to and run it. In Apache Shea Meter, we're going to be using a test plan that can be found on the repository for this video. This test plan is called test plan with csp.jmx. We open it. An Apache Shea Meter test plan has different elements. For example, it has a thread group. This is the first one we're going to look at. It's the most important one. Uh, it has the variable number of threads, which will be the number of concurrent calls that the, that the test plan is going to be doing. In this example, we had 100 and the loop count is 10. So this means there's going to be 10 requests per, in, in each one of the threads. Then the other element is an HTTP request. We can have as many HTTP requests as we want in a, in a test plan. In this test plan, we, are, in this H, we have one HTTP request. Uh, we set the HTTP request elements, for example, the, the protocol, the IP, which is going to be localhost, the pronumber number is going to be 8000, the method is going to be get, and the path is going to be user. Uh, we're going to use one particular user for the test, so we're always going to be hitting the same user. We are going to run the test. To run a test, we click on the play button, uh, which is the start button and, and the top here. We run the test. Well, it run, it's done. Uh, let's see a result tree. The result tree has uh, has each and every one of the requests that were done on the test plan. And we can see what was the response data. In this case, it was the user, user data. We have the request, the exact request that was done. Apart from that, we have a summary report. Summary report shows us the number of samples that were taken, which was 1,000. The average time for the sample to, to work was 26. The minimum time was zero and the maximum was 485, as we see here. The standard deviation was 4840. We had no errors. And the total throughput, this is a very important uh, metric, is the amount of requests that the application was able to handle. In this case, it was 610.1 uh, requests per second. And then we have the received and, and sent bytes. Uh, this is not really that important, but the throughput is really important, 610.1 by second. Uh, the other report we have is aggregate report. The aggregate report has, again, the number of samples, the average, which was 26, the median, which was 16, uh, the 90% line, which is the 90% per percentile, was 49, 95% was 56, and 99% was 349. A quick review of that you might know from your uh, statistic class. An average is calculated by taking the sum of all results and dividing them by the number of samples. Uh, the median is the exact uh, number in the middle of, of the number of samples. If you order in, in 
ascending or descending order it will be in the middle for example now we had a thousand samples so it's probably 500 of or the average between 500 and 501 and then we have the percentiles so what is a percentile a percentile or a centile is a measure used in a statistic indicating the value below which a given percentage of operations in a group of observations fall for example, the 90th percentile is the value of a core below which 90% of the observations were may be found. So in this example, 90% of our of our request took less than 49 milliseconds, 95% took less than 56, and 99% took less than 349. The other thing to look at is the aggregate graph. We can generate a graph. We're going to generate a graph where we display the, the average, the medium, and all the percentile lines. So we generate a graph. We can see here the results graph. This is the 99% line. This is the 95% line. This is the 90% line. This is the median, and this is the average. On the test we have just done, we have uh, always used the same, the same user. So we're always asking the, the service from the same user. This is not very useful because MariaDB will cache uh, results of queries that are common. So it's caching the results. That's why we have had so much variation between zero and 480 something on our results. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a CSV, a list of different usernames that are on CSV format that we can fit it to the HTTP request. To that, we go and we do add, config element csv dataset config uh, there's a variety of username dumps on the video re repo we're going to be using usernames 10,000 to 0 which are 10,000 different usernames that start at, at value c at 0 or the first 10,000 we open it the variable names is going to be username there, that's the only one I have. If you, you might have different variable names in your CSV and create more complex URLs. We're going to set ignore first to true. And on our HTTP request, we're going to reference that variable. So if we run the request now, we're going to get results that are more similar to real conditions. On the thread group, we're going to do 100 loop count so we have 100 threads with 100 counts it's going to be 10,000 requests uh, let's run this the test plan took 4 minutes 34 seconds to complete I had to do a little change because uh, this machine wasn't handling that many threads so I changed the number of threads to 10 and the loop count to 1,000 so we had 10,000 requests let's see the summary report um, the average of the 10,000 samples was 271 milliseconds the minimum was zero and the maximum was 728. Uh, we had a throughput of 36.4 requests per second. That's not very good, but well, remember that since we had 10,000 different uh, usernames and we were making 10,000 requests, we were always having a new user. So the database had always to go to this, can find the results, etc., and produce re the result for the request. The average report. 90% line was 341, 95% was 358, and 99% line was 462. Let's see an aggregate graph. And we see here the aggregate graph. The average was 271, 277 was the median. Well, it's the same results we saw on, on, on here. Apache Shameter has a whole set of other things you can use. You can look at when you do an ad. For example, you could set a, an HTTP header on a request. Uh, you have other types of graph you can generate, etc. I try to show the usual, most common configuration for Apache Shameter, which is what we have here. And well, that's it for this video.